We're going to take a quick tour now of Autodesk Tinkercad Circuits, which is an online browser-based circuit simulator from Autodesk. We'll use this tool quite a bit in this course. I'm going to bring up the web page, and I'm already logged into my Autodesk account, so it drops us right into the dashboard. Note that Tinkercad has other components too. There's a 3D design editor, but we we're only going to focus on the circuits part. So right here is a button, create new circuit, right here in the middle. If I click on that, I, get, I bring up a blank workspace. On the right is a column of components, a menu that goes down. Um, I can simply click and drag a component from that menu out into the workspace to create a component. I'm going to create an LED, a resistor, and a 9-volt battery. Each of these is a two-terminal device, and I can wire them together by clicking on the terminals. So if I click on the positive terminal of the battery and the anode of the LED, I create a wire, the cathode of the LED to the, to the resistor, and then the resistor to the negative terminal. Now I've created a simple circuit that will light up the LED. Up in the right is a button called Start Simulation. If I click on that, we'll see the LED turn on. So not much of a simulation, but that now is simulating the circuit, and we can see it go. If we want a little more detail, we can scroll down and, and pick up a multimeter. These are very useful for measuring properties of the circuit. I can take the positive terminal of the multimeter to the anode of the LED, and the negative terminal to the other, other the, the cathode of the LED. And now, after I start my simulation, we'll see that we get a voltage reading which represents the voltage drop across the LED. This will all make more sense in time, but this shows you that you can build a circuit with analog components and measure its properties and do some analysis. If you go to the right, the components menu uh, starts out in basic mode, but you, the dropdown allows you to pick all, which will show you a much greater variety of components, including sensors and switches and other, other more elaborate parts. Right now, I'm just going to scroll down until I see the Arduino Uno R3 and drag that out. This is a simulation of an entire microcontroller board that we will use quite a bit. Now, I can not only add wires and circuits to the microcontroller, but I can also program it. There's a button marked Code up on the right. If I click on that, it'll toggle the code editor. It, by default, comes up in this block programming mode, and if I go ahead and just look at that, you can see on the, on the left are some operators, on the right is a stack of blocks. If I click now on Start Simulation again, it'll run the program. And if we zoom in here at the onboard LED, it's blinking. So on the right, there's a simple program that turns the LED on, waits a second, turns it off, waits another second. And we can see the effect in the LED. The Blocks Editor is not a bad way to get started, but is ultimately going to be limiting. So if we look, stop the simulation here and look again at the blocks menu, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, code editor, where it says blocks, this menu here, can actually pick between blocks, blocks, and text, and text. If I go ahead and switch my program from the block mode to text mode, um, it'll give me a warning. But what I can see now is on the right, the, edit, the block editor has gone away, and it, what we have instead is a text editor that allows us to edit a, a more ordinary C++ uh, based Arduino program, much like we're going to use throughout the course. And now we can see the same set of operations rendered as kind of a text format. Up in the right, you'll see it says all changes saved. The sketches are saved in real time to your online account, where they're available online. It will give it kind of an arbitrary name uh, every time it's a random name. If you click here, I recommend that you always give yourself a, a more basic name so that you have something to remember it by. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, um, and then it'll save on that. If I click again on the Tinkercad logo in the upper left, it'll take me back to my workspace. Then I can see any of the sketches that I've recently defined.